I am doing good. So, uh, could you turn on your stream? Yeah, is it loud? Yeah. We're getting some echo here. Sorry. I Sorry, we are, uh, we're not as good as Anthony. We're going to try our best to be as good as Anthony. <laughs> so, Greg, we were going to open up the show with a special little jingle that, that you started out with earlier. Do you want to try to do this together? <laughs> no, I think I think you can do the honors. The best part of waking up is ramen and chub in your cup. That's actually a really bad idea. You know, <laughs> it's kind of gross. I also haven't showered since yesterday, so... I'm oh, God. Oh. Yeah, it's nasty. <laughs> All right. So, yes, yeah, so we can officially start here now. So... Everybody, welcome to Missing Star Podcast, episode 97. And the, ep the episode name today is going to be the Not Anthony edition. <laughs> <laughs> the stupid Not Anthony. The Everybody, welcome to Missing Oh, God. Sorry. Righty then. So, we're basically, we're going to be covering the news from this week. <clears throat> let me pull up my chat real quick, and let me pull up my... Notes. Before we begin, I want to give a shout out to everybody who is in the chat right now and all the people who have shared the cast and everybody who has been in and out of here and supported us. Be sure to check out MinstarPodcast.com, of course. All right. So we have a bunch of topics to touch on today. I think our first topic is um, let's talk about the big Nintendo Direct. So they had the Nintendo Direct big? earlier. It was really, really big. <laughs> it was really big. I I mean, sure we can call it big if you want. I thought it was pretty big. They had like a <laughs> lot of information, a lot of new cool things. That's you know, for Nintendo. Yes, they did. I just yeah. like fucking around. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, first also, off, just just so everyone's uh uh curious. I have uh, I bought EA Access just so I could play Star Wars early. <laughs> so if I sound a little distracted, there's a reason behind it. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Sorry, Anthony. Continue. Anthony, you call you call me Anthony. Look, that's weird. It's different. Okay. That's really weird. Just... That right, that was go. weird. Just, oh, <laughs> start. Start ramen. Okay. So yeah. The first bit of news that we want to talk about was Twilight Princess HD. That is going to be... Is that, did that say that they were coming out with that for holiday? Um, I, I honestly don't know. I don't remember. Yeah. We're off to a great start today, guys. <laughs> Look, you're, the, you're the one that took Anthony's role. Yeah. It's not, it's not as easy as Anthony made. I've also died four <laughs> times in a row just now. Oh, God. So, yeah, so Twilight Princess HD, they announced it. Um, it's going to be for the Wii U. Uh, like, Wii U. when I saw the uh, the graphics, I mean, they look better, but not better. You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't look as good as the, uh, the Wind Waker HD release. Um, well, you know what's funny is a lot of people were saying that, like, oh, it's it, it doesn't look as great, it doesn't look as clean or polished, and yeah. uh, they actually put out, like, a tweet that showed similar uh, comparisons. Oh really? oh, really? Yeah. Look that much better, or was it just kind of like, eh? Oh, it looks way fucking better. Well, Twilight Princess um, after this, After in... this match, I'll see if I can't find a picture, because it, um, it looked drastically different, like... You take screenshots of like there's a knight with like bulgy eyes, and it's so different. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and then they they had also said that they were going to uh, announce some like new features game like at like a later date. So we have to kind of like wait and see like what kind of new features that they're gonna actually add to the game. Like I'm pretty sure it'll probably just be like <clears throat> you can post to the Meverse, and here's like a Midna fucking amiibo i think it has a lot <laughs> to do with the uh the um amiibos yeah 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 that's probably it because they they had they showed that they had um a wolf link amiibo that they were going to release with the game 
right. which is crazy. They actually announced like a lot of um, amiibo stuff. Like there was some um, Animal Crossing things, and then um, for some of the other games, it's pretty cool to see that they're still kind of banking on that whole like amiibo idea. I mean, is it cool or is it just a thing? Yeah, it's uh, it, it's making them money. I'll tell you that. Yeah, I mean, I guess that's a good thing. <laughs> okay. I don't know, the thing the thing about those like toys that you can collect mm -hmm. that have to do with something or whatever it's 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 a novel idea. It's fun, but it's it's certainly not something that should be mandatory or necessary. Yeah. Like if it's a situation where you like you just miss an entire part of Twilight Princess because um uh because you don't have that amiibo or whatever it's bullshit yeah yeah i mean like um i don't know i've, I've kind of like it like i kind of like I, I like i don't have a wii u but i want to just g get them and then put them all over my my room and on my desk and whatnot like they had no, they're great i i think i think they're fantastic i just yeah. i think that uh don't don't, don't exclude people from access to certain parts of your game just because you the, want them yeah. to buy a tiny plastic figure. Yeah, I agree. Is that that kind of happened with uh, Smash in a way? Uh, kind of. I, I I don't know that I agree with that, but yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So carrying on, so Twilight Princess HD, like eh, that's cool. Uh, they announced. The, did they announce the uh, release date for Pokken? Pretty sure they did. So, um, they had a new trailer for uh, Pokken. They announced that it was going to be coming out for the Wii U. And then they also showed off uh, Dark Mewtwo. Yes. Like, it was like um, Emo Mewtwo. <laughs> Pretty cool. I know like a lot of people are really hyped for uh, Pokken. I am one of them. Looks like it's going to be an awesome game. Um, the cast of characters looks pretty cool. I hope they add some more characters like before the actual release of the game. Okay. Yeah. I mean, and the thing about Pokken is it'll probably play like Tekken, and I don't play Tekken well, so. Yeah. Yeah. I'm I sure mean, it'll be um, cool. I'm sure it'll be a fun fighting game, and I and I can't wait to see it in action. Mm -hmm. I think that's the thing that has me most excited is like. Like, if it's at Evo, holy crap, that's going to be awesome. That would be really sick to have, like, a uh, a Pokemon fighting a game Pokemon at Evo. tournament? Yeah, that'd a be Pokemon sick. A Pokemon tournament, Ramen? No, I'm Is having that what it. what you're going to say? No. No. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> uh, I, can't, I can't wait for that game. That game is going to be a fuck ass. Okay. And then also they showed off uh, Star Fox. They showed off some of the new vehicles, some of the new modes. That, uh, and then it has a release date I'm, for April 22nd. I'm legitimately worried that this game is going to suffer from the same problems that uh, the last big Star Fox game had. And that was like weird controls for weird things that I don't normally give a crap about. Like the, the tank and the walker and the stuff like that. Like, I don't know. It just all seems like a little too much. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, you got this gyroscopper thing. Like, I don't, I'm not going to care about those slippy missions with this stupid fucking robot. I just want to play in a goddamn R Wing and shoot things. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I mean, I agree. I, I, mean, I agree in a certain way. Like, um, I mean, the idea of, of being able to drive around in the R Wing and then jump into, like, switch your mode to the little walker chicken looking thing, you know what I mean? I think it kind of, like, mixes up the uh, gameplay. But the, the the new thing that they showed, it was like, oh yeah, it's like a stealth mission. I don't really care too much about like stealth missions in Star Fox, you gonna to put, tell you the truth. Not to interrupt, are you going to put any other imagery on the screen? No, I'm not. Then make our icons a little bit bigger? Because <laughs> there's a lot of empty space. Well, no, 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 because uh, we have a guest that's going to join us. Uh... In a few. And the guest is secret. Oh, ho, 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 guys. Secret, secrets. Secret, secret guest. Let's go come in here. Secret. And uh, I needed guess, to make some. man. I, I needed to make some room for our guest picture. 
play Look, it I'm once. excited to play the new Star Fox. I'm, I'm excited to play Star Fox Zero. Mm-hmm. Um, I just have my reserves, you know. Like, I don't want to see it turn into this monstrosity that it looks like it might be. It just, mm-hmm. it's, it's. I mean, when you go back and you think of Star Fox or Star Fox 64, what made those games fun? The simplicity of flying an R-Wing or just driving the land the Landmaster, I think is what it was called. Yep. Like, that was fun. When it when they started getting into, like, Star Fox Assault, where it's like you're on foot and then you're in, like, a tank and then you have these missions where, like, it got way too complicated for no reason. Mm-hmm. And they're like, and you can fly around in an R-Wing... And you can do this, and you can do that. Oh, and there's this ship, and there's this new gyrocopter thing, and there's this, and it's like, um, stop. Like, yeah. that's not what we want from a Star Fox game. Like, I'm not trying to pull that whole, like, <laughs> that, like, I just want it the way that I want it. It's just kind of like, <laughs> I hope that those segments that they've added in with those new vehicles is fun. I really hope it's fun. Because mm-hmm. that's the overall aspect to Star Fox is that it was just fun, and I feel like adding more to it makes it slightly less. Yeah, so, yeah, I, I, I can kind of see. At least from my experience with past Star Fox games. Yeah, I mean, I just kind of feel like um, I feel like there's there's room for adding new things to the game to make it a little sure. bit more interesting, of course. But I just hope it doesn't go too overboard. Um. Right, I agree. The the thing about the game that I find really like crazy, it's like it's like the fourth or like third time that it's like hey, this game doesn't take place after the original Star Fox sixty four or the original original Star Fox. This is like a complete like reboot, like retelling of the story that's been told four times already. It's like seriously? Yeah, you guys can't like make it after 64 because everybody wants to know like what happens after Star Fox 64 like what happens to Star Fox's father the Andros come back like like you guys can't think of something else you know yeah it, yeah no, I agree yeah so I don't know um I'm hyped for it I cannot wait so yeah that's April 22nd 2016 for the Wii U uh I can't wait for it and then they so moving on some of the things they talked about. Uh, we'll kind of touch on this, these things like a little bit briefly because I don't really know too much about these games as you do. Uh, they showed uh, off. Um, they showed off a trailer that I thought was really weird. A fast racing Neo. Oh, it was yeah. like a. Ra- <laughs> it, it, it was basically F Zero, and it's gonna be. It's coming out for the Wii U, and they were like, "Yeah, like high speed futuristic racing at 60 frames a second on the Wii U." And it literally looked like F Zero, and I was so mad that it was not F Zero. Like they haven't made an F Zero game since uh, GameCube. I don't know if they if if Sony tomorrow was like, <clears throat> I think it was Sony that made the game was just like tomorrow. Um, For F, no 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 F F F Zeros. We have a new Jet Moto game coming out. Oh, Jet Moto! But yeah. it's not Jet Moto at all. It's this new franchise. But it plays. It looks identical to Jet Moto. I'd still be like, "Cool, I'm gonna fucking play it." Yeah, but F Zero has its own charm and its own characters. Eh, sure, I understand that. But at the same time, maybe they wanted to add some stuff that's not F Zero like, and adding it into F Zero would piss off fans. So you make a game that's F Zero esque. While adding in new stuff that's not F Zero esque, and call it something else. Yeah, I guess I was just kind of like racing game that's not F Zero, but is F Zero. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, is that is that in, is that necessarily a bad thing? Uh, no, not really. I, I, I mean, I guess not. I was just kind of just like kind 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 of salty. I felt like Nintendo was kind of like. <laughs> Remember F Zero? It was cool, right? You're not getting it. Um. Okay. So after that, they showed I off just Fire Emblem. Out here, but the uh, the rebel faces that I'm looking through right now mm-hmm. to unlock. Hug. Lee. <laughs> we will touch on that later on, Gregu. I'll give you your chance to rant about the awesomeness of Star Wars Battlefront. There's nothing to rant about. They're just, it's just oof. 
<laughs> oh. Okay. So then they announced the uh, new Fire Emblem game. It's going to be three different games, right? And it's supposed to have, like, basically a branching story. Like, the game... Like, in order to get the full story of the game, you have to play all three games. And they, of course, announced a... Uh, a special edition that's going to include all three games so you can play them all, get the full story. I think that was pretty cool. I don't really play Fire Emblem games. What? Oh, Fire Emblem, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Fire Emblem games. Yeah, so I mean... Uh, yeah, Fire, Fire I mean, I, I know that Fire Emblem is really, really big in Japan, or mm-hmm. at least bigger in Japan than it is here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Fire Emblem is definitely one of those... It's one of those franchises that kind of slipped through my fingers just because of its core gameplay mm-hmm. what just didn't fit just didn't i didn't like it yeah i mean i don't know i just i kind of feel like um fire emblem became a thing over here in america thanks to smash pretty much because they're like oh yeah right. that who's that cool blue haired guy Marth. oh my god what game is he from yeah i think that's how that whole thing started okay let's see some other things they showed off. They showed off Mighty Number no. Nine for the 3DS. I thought that was pretty cool. And speaking of Mighty Number no. Nine, from the same creator, they showed off a Mega Man collection. I think it's Mega Man One uh, through Eight that's no, going to be no. released. No, it's it's what I have on my Xbox right now. It's the Legacy Collection. It's Is it Legacy one Collection? Six. Yeah. Oh, one, one through six. six. Okay. Yeah. yeah. It. Um. They wanted to release it. I think that's both digital and I don't know. There's some something <coughs> happened in the process of making it, so Nintendo's getting it later. And they're just like, "Hey, hey, we have this also coming up." <laughs> it's like, do you guys remember Mega Man? Remember how cool he was? Guess what? <laughs> He's not getting a new game. You play the same he shit not- you've been playing for the last like ten years. He not he not gonna get a new game. <laughs> he is going to get a new game, but it's going to be called My Number Nine. <laughs> well, yeah. Yep. There's that. Okay, and after that, um, towards the end, they showed that they were going to be re-releasing Pokemon Red, Blue, and Yellow, and that's going to be released on February 27th of next year. Now, the really, the really cool thing about this. Is the um um uh a ba-duh, a ba-duh, a ba-duh, 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 ba-duh. uh the really cool thing about this is that if you buy it, you actually get to uh, trade. So like yeah. if uh, trade over the internet. So let's say someone has it on their whatever device. Like you just link up, and go. Can you want to trade? Yeah, I mean, I think think that's going to be cool. I just hope that they, um, I kind of hope that they, that they keep everything like it was, the original. You know what I mean? Oh, sure. I'm, I, I am almost hundred percent sure it will. Yeah. I don't think it. It'll be top down. If it's revamped graphics, oh the fuck well, like cool. But I, <laughs> I can't imagine that they change the core, <laughs> the core elements of of the game. Yeah. That would be. Yeah, I mean, um, I just kind of hope that they keep like the shit like in um, like like missing no, and some of the other like glitches that they had in the game, you know. But I kind of have a feeling that they might actually take out some of that fucked up stuff that you could do. Yeah. Yeah. And so I mean, I just really, really hope they keep all stuff, broken stuff like uh. Like it was like um, Hyper Fang and Earthquake or something like that. Like always did like crit damage like no matter what during the battles and stuff like that. So I kind of he- hope that they keep that that kind of stuff in there. I'm sure they will. Yeah. Okay. Look at my notes here. Anything else from it that you want to uh, touch on before we go to some of the bigger topics? Uh, did you talk about Smash? We're gonna do that, and we're gonna do that with our special okay, guest. Right. Oh. Ah, spoilers, Greg. God damn it! Look, I didn't say what it was. <laughs> All right. So before we move on to that, let me get our guest in here. 
let's talk about Linkle. Linkle was announced for uh, Hyrule Warriors, which is basically a it's a female version of Link, which is yeah. I mean, I mean, it's it's I think it's cool that they have a female version of Link. Um, a lot of people are kind of making it like a really really big deal. Like, oh my god, another female in a game that's full of females. Like, I just kind of, I kind of find it funny that they I, added another I female to the, the game. Fact, I love the fact that there's a female Link, and I really do think that Linkle um, is going to be a character, a playable character in the new Legend of Zelda game. Um, that being said, um, yeah, Link Linkle is cute. Um. I like that me the blondes. Sad. I think Linkle is a dumb fucking name. Yeah, Linkle is kind of a shitty name. I kind of wish they would have given her like a different, like, Linky. <laughs> like, something like that, you know? I, at first, I thought it was Linky. When I looked at the, uh, when I looked at the, the character list, I was like, Linky? Who the fuck is Linky? <laughs> and then somebody had said Linkle, and I was like, oh. Yeah. Got it. The name is kind of weird. It's Yeah, it's just dumb, like... I get that they wanted to make a, a link, a female link sounding name, but for crying out loud. Yeah, I kind of feel like they could have just given her like a different name, like Veronica or something. I don't know. Um, it's also cool that she has a, like her fighting style is basically she's like dual wielding uh, like crossbows. And, yeah, and she looks pretty badass. Like I said, I would I would have kind of figured they would have just given her like a sword and been like, okay, yeah, it's it's Link, but just a chick. But I'm kind of happy that they d decided to make her different, you know. Yeah, I, I I sincerely hope I like sincerely hope that this new Legend of Zelda is a situation where you start off the game and you're given the choice to either be female or male, and that if you pick female, you have to save the prince. Mm -hmm. And it's a news. It's like. Relda or some stupid shit like that. Oh, <laughs> Relda. And then, uh... Rel... Rel... Reldo. <laughs> yeah. That would be pretty cool to do that. Yeah. But I, I just... I kind of find it funny that it's like, uh... Like, when, when that game first came out, um, I was kind of like, I was like, okay, yeah, it's Hyrule Warriors, and I felt like the subtitle could have been, like, Link and his bitches. Cause it's just it's it's like it's like it's like full of women. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I get what you're saying. Yeah. You're throwing down. So yeah, I'm playing I'm a going Han Solo to... right now. Just so you know. Did you shoot first? Ah. Uh, yes, yeah, so I'm shooting Palpatine in the fucking face. Good. All right. So now we're going to. Uh, move on to some of the bigger topics which is Splatoon and the new character in Smash and for that we're going to bring on a guest because we don't play any of those games so we need somebody who knows what they're talking about uh, okay so give me a moment here while I get them in the call if I can remember how to add people to the call Okay. One moment here. I'm gonna jetpack out of here, man. Hey, yes. Boba Fett. Let me let me let me give you a hint. You're in a cave. Stop trying to jetpack out. Who was the guess? The guess is the best Smash Brothers player that yes, I know. We won. The rebels beat the Empire. Yeah. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Hi. Okay, so everybody, I want you guys to welcome to the podcast, Miss Coriman. She is a streamer yeah. on Twitch. She streams a lot of Splatoon, and she streams a lot of Smash, and some other things, and she's awesome. I feel, and, like, I feel like your yes. name, Coriman, is, is like, I could do something with you and then train you to oh. evolve or change. No, that, that, look. <laughs> that came it, out it wrong, Greg. It wasn't to sound dirty. I was going well, for a Digimon. I was going for a Digimon reference, and it didn't pan out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, the the thought was there. Yes. <laughs> Damn it, Greg. 
What a what a great way to welcome our guest. <laughs> With a Digimon you, reference, I agree. I agree. Yes. A yes. dirty Digimon reference. A dirty Digimon yeah, reference. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna train you to do some cool some uh... oh god <laughs> okay so <laughs> moving on from the dirty Digimon um so we we brought Miss Corymon on here and she plays a lot of Splatoon and they announced some of the changes for Splatoon they announced that you can now do offline modes you can play tournaments and whatnot I don't I'm pretty sure that includes system links play and they also uh, announced some of the new maps yes so the maps actually already came out they came out one of them came out the day the direct came out and uh, I think that was mahi mahi resort resort mm -hmm. it's a it's a Hawaii based or Hawaii inspired map it's really nice it has a lot of water both of the maps um, rely a lot on maneuverability uh, around the stage, and they're kind of they're kind of complicating. Um, I got to try out mahi mahi, mm -hmm. and uh, it's a uh, yeah. I mean, they're so they're really fast. I, I do have a question. I do have a question. There's a map that I kind of saw. I'm not sure how it works, but part of the map like comes up from the water. Does it go back down and wash all the paint away? Ooh, or does it just stay know, up after it comes up from the water? That is Mahi Mahi Resort, but I only played that stage once, and I, I actually didn't pay attention to that. Um, but at the beginning of the stage, uh, the water is actually up first, and then the stage transforms into mostly land. So I assume that um, the paint isn't really touched that much because of the transformation sequence that it goes through. Mm -hmm. uh. yeah. You see, I mean, that's, that's kind of cool that they're... Uh... They're starting to add maps that like move and change like as you play. Yeah. Well, I that's think the it's whole really... thing. That's the whole... sorry. I was gonna say that's the whole thing about um, Splatoon is the uh, like you said maneuverability. Mm -hmm. It requires you to be more active and mobile than uh, or not mobile, whatever um, than <laughs> other shooters where you have to kind of maneuver around maneuverability. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Um, <laughs> it just requires you to be. Uh, to move around the map more and not just fucking camp or or do things like you can in other shooters because you you're not the, the goal isn't to kill it's to paint or I'm yeah. sorry ink ink up the map ink up the map well that's that's a uh, a lot of the modes that Splatoon provides like Rainmaker and uh, Tower Control uh, all the all the modes really require you to be aggressive they don't really allow you to camp and uh, the stages, Absolutely. yeah, I like that a lot. It, it it gives you guys, or it gives people initiative to move around and not just camp. And a lot of the, I guess, perks, I don't really know what to call them. They have a word. Skills, I don't know, that the weapons give you. Uh, make it so um, it's actually easier to be aggressive because there's tracking that lasts up to 10 seconds. So you know where everybody is and you just go after them. And they can't just sit there and... And and hide. They they definitely have to move around, or yep. they, get, they get busted up. Yes, I mean like like. So, for, and then they showed the other map, which is supposed to be like a like, it looked like a like um, Neo Tokyo style <laughs> with like art everywhere. You know what I mean? Yeah, that's a that's Museum Day. What is it? Al Al Alfonsino. That's a that's a museum based map. I don't know what that inspi is inspired by. Probably you know a museum, but it's a it's a really I, angular stage. Hmm? I want to see like a whole map design that's based off of like some human ruins. Because I love the lore oh, behind man. Splatoon. Yeah, it's actually I I've never collected all of the scrolls to get the whole story, so I don't know the lore very well behind Splatoon. Um, I've watched a lot of the videos on YouTube and the whole, like, there's this whole thing where, like, um, humans died out thousands of years ago. Mm. And due That's to, like, some, already. Kind, some <laughs> kind of radiation or some shit. Oh, Jesus. Uh, damn it, Raman. Radiation. Uh, yeah, squ squid and octopus uh, went up on land and um, there was a war at some point during their evolution cycle. Mm. And the squid won. 
and uh, continue to evolve into the squid people that you know in Splatoon, whereas the Octarians did not, necessarily. They still evolved to be intelligent, to be as intelligent, but they didn't evolve to be bipedal. And, oh, okay. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. It's, 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 I really enjoy that, like, really weird lore that they've created. It's, but, uh, yeah. it's pretty funny. It's, that, that doesn't seem very Nintendo. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> But I mean, I kind of, I kind of find it really cool that they're, that they decided to um, add this um, offline mode now, to where you know you can actually have tournaments. And then they announced that they were going to have a, uh, a national tournament, right? Series, I think, coming up for the game. Uh, in Japan. Yeah. I remember them announcing that last direct. I don't think that was this direct though. Uh, they announced some kind. Of, uh, I should have oh, took more notes. Yeah. No, it's I should have okay. took more notes. Yeah. So they're supposed to be um, adding a new tournament series. I think it's going to be for here in America. Hmm. And uh, yeah, just given the option for people to play it offline and hold tournaments, like it's so awesome because like the Wii U finally has like it's 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 competitive shooter in a way you know like i've seen i've i've been seeing your, your streams and it looks like it can get pretty, pretty hype and pretty competitive you know? yeah the 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 way they they released the game was uh rumored to be incomplete and so they've been pumping out a bunch of um patches and content almost monthly maybe even faster than you know that you know what's funny is is then this kind of goes into just about every game that's coming out, mm -hmm. and Splatoon falls into this category now, and that's investors don't give a shit. And I talked about this last week on the podcast too. Investors don't give a shit how many units you sell; they want to know how long you can, how long people will continue playing the game. How like if in a year from now they come out with some DLC that makes new people come and play the game, that's what they want to know. Um, it's, it's funny you mention that, because in the in the trailer, or in the Nintendo Direct, they, they actually hinted and said that we'll be, continue to be releasing content at least until next January. So when next January hits, I have no idea what they have planned for the game, because they implied that the DLC would be... Um, Complete by then? Either, yeah, I don't know. Maybe they'll start making you pay for the DLC. I'm mm -hmm. not sure what they were trying to imply by saying that, but it was it was kind of weird. Um, how yeah, it yeah, it was kind of weird the way they worded it, right? It's fascinating when you look at DLC and the length of a game being out, and depending on the company and depending on the... like, Because Splatoon is still a new franchise, so mm -hmm. I think that they're trying to just get fans right now, just trying to lock them in by yep. just giving out free DLC. Yeah. Um, but if a game can continue being relevant for years after its release, um, and then they do like microtransactions, don't be surprised if Splatoon gets microtransactions. Oh, um, definitely not. Oh, yeah. Because like I Destiny, for that. example, I hate to bring up Destiny into this, but <laughs> they they recently had a microtransaction situation, and they announced that the reason they're doing microtransactions instead of doing DLC packs is because now for the next year that DLC or that Destiny will still be around, the updates and the and the new content will be free. Oh because wow. Because they're doing microtransactions. Yeah, so see, that's Splatoon pretty cool. does microtransactions and then does really you know releases new maps and new characters and new weapon types or whatever for free. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really, really cool. Like that's yeah. when microtransactions are red. That's when like I don't have a problem with them. Mm -hmm. Um but it, they have to be cosmetic. <laughs> they cannot yeah. be like, hey, uh, so you want like a shield for your for your guy? Like, you take that in the multiplayer and see how it works out. No, don't do that shit. That's yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it it seems like uh, there's a bright future for the game ahead. Oh yeah, it's. I, I think it's gonna live for a while. Yeah. Long, oh yeah, yeah. It's it's now. it's still immensely popular, like uh, mm -hmm. in terms of a Nintendo franchise that's still being played and m competitive. Like, I think that there needs to be, um, wouldn't it be rad, wouldn't it be just swell and cool <laughs> if all of a sudden Splatoon got a MOBA-like game type? Oh, boy. 
that would oh, be so interesting. <laughs> it's possible. Oh, I mean, if you look at the the way the game plays, it's absolutely possible. That would be pretty cool. It would if they released that today. You know, it would probably uh, help with my Overwatch withdraw. Oh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> uh, I I just want to play that game so bad, mm. so bad. Overwatch looks, looks so cool. So yeah. Um. Um, okay, okay. Is there anything else we want to talk about as far as Splatoon goes? Um. Anything mm, else? Nope, not really. They did give some interesting statistics. I mean, so far, oh gosh, all the free DLC they've released: eight maps, twenty-seven weapons, eighty plus pieces of gear. They've released lobbies and all that's free. Matchmaking. Yep. Wow. Yep, all of it is free. But I'm I'm pretty sure that. Uh, Part of it is just compensation for not releasing the full game to us. Because when the game was released, we didn't have private matchmaking. So we couldn't play with oh, our friends. Oh, yeah, I remember about that. Yeah. yeah. That yeah. was huge. People were like, why can't you do that? They were going crazy. At least yeah, on Yeah, that was kind of lame. Like, I mean, I kind of feel like maybe they were kind of like testing the waters. Maybe. The, you know what I mean? To kind of that... see like, kind of see like, okay, like, is, is there an actual audience for this stuff on the Wii U? Or is it only for... These people who have the Xbox or PS4. Well, yeah. yeah, I mean, I mean, Nintendo's known for their single-player experiences, and if it's multiplayer, it's couch co-op. That's that's the whole idea. They, yep. you know, with Smash and Mario Kart, they've really been pushing the online mode because it's easy to do that. Um, mm -hmm. Or, well, maybe not easy, but it's definitely something that is necessary in today's market, and it was successful. Mario Kart 8 and um, the Smash 4 have been immensely successful with the online community. Uh, granted that the DS version is wonky as hell, but... Um, <laughs> uh, so, like, with Splatoon, it was a no-brainer to add a shooter, but it's got to be mm -hmm. Nintendo, and, you know, Nintendo's got to be different, and I think that, you know, you got Mario Kart 8 and Smash 4 and Splatoon. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you got this, new, got this new shooter, guys. Um... Be gentle. Except, but it's not a shooter. You <laughs> s walk around and you squirt things. It's. Yeah, this is getting, <laughs> starting to get a little dirty here. I don't know <laughs> Shut up. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, huh. hey it yeah. wasn't as bad as your dirty Digimon, okay? I do. It wasn't meant to be dirty. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, moving on. Speaking of Smash 4, there is a new character that just got announced at the end of the direct. Whoa, what character? It is yeah, none other. It wasn't on the internet all fucking day. Who are you talking about? <laughs> yeah, I don't. Okay, look. So you guys, you guys, you guys might need to sit down for this. Okay, you guys, you guys might not know. All right, let me grab my yeah. chair. Yeah, you, you, you gotta sit down. <laughs> but Cloud, motherfucking strife. Holy Final shit. Fantasy VII's owned is going to be in Smash Four, and he looks badass. He looks sick. He yeah. looks uh, I, I I like how they uh they gave him like his uh it's like his regular outfit then he has his like Advent Children variant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. So since you are the resident Smash player, what do you think of Cloud as a character? What do I think of Cloud? I think uh man, the thing that intrigued me the most was um they briefly showed a limit break for Cloud and. Um, part of me is thinking that that's not, uh, related to his final smash. I think that might be just a part of his character. Kind of like how Little Mac has a bar that builds up. Oh yeah, I like the, the like, punch. yeah, the KO punch, yeah. Yeah, I think, I, th I think that, um, his limit break might work similarly. And if that were the case, that would be a really cool mechanic for a sword fighter. And, uh, that could... Potentially put him pretty high on the tier list. Um, he, I mean, sword fighters already have uh, disjointed hitboxes, so he's got that going for him. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> it looks like he has a really quick down smash that hits forward and behind him. Um, his range looks really good. Oh, oh no! God damn it, Craig! So I was trying to find that a lot earlier. <laughs> I had that a way earlier. Your your timing like, is so oh, off no. today. All right, it's the it's. The <laughs> It's the uh, thought that counts. Yes. We'll, yeah, we'll yeah, edit exactly, that in. Exactly. Right yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll edit it there later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll do this post-production, post guys. Um, 
no, as for Cloud Smash, I, I think I agree. Like the Omni Smash Omni looks Smash. like it's a it, it doesn't look like that's his uh that's his final for sure. I agree. Yeah. I don't know yeah. I'm not sure what it could be that's his final smash. It'll probably be like Knights of the Round and it'll take twenty minutes to get through. Oh my god. Oh no. <laughs> I do like one of the things I do like about it because, like, I—I well, I mean, not that I don't like anything about it because I think it's fucking awesome. But um, one of the things I noticed was that it looks like it's not just uh, 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 Cloud. We also get a um, a Final Fantasy VII level, which I can't remember the city. Midgar. Midgar thank you. Um, wait, is that the name of the city? I think so, right? Or is, uh, I thought that was I the name know. of the planet that they're on. Was Midgar. oh. Um... It's that Final Fantasy VII so, stage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, someone, someone in the chat. Someone in the chat finished Come that. Come on, like, chat, um, help us out. I'm pretty sure it's Midgar. Uh, but no, there's uh, there's summons. Um, like, uh, and I think that the summons are going to be uh, uh, assist trophies or whatever. I think they're actually just, like, part of the stage. Like, they're just... It's, it, it's like one of those active stages where, like, shit's, like, always going on, you know? I think like like kinda while like the you're old Pokemon ones. yeah yeah kind of like the old Pokemon ones. So I think like while you're fighting, fighting, that's when um the the summons will come out and like that that's so sick like the idea uh, of, I, of I don't fighting know I, and then it's I like mean... Infrit comes out and then Shiva <laughs> and then Neo Bahamut. Oh. So so what so what you're telling me is you don't think that there'll be assist trophies, just added um, in overall that you think that you think they'll just be. Uh... There'll be um, stage uh, hazard. level level yeah, yeah stage hazard. I can't you. remember the last assist trophy they actually put in. Yeah, I don't think they've added any assist trophies. Well, I hope um, they're assist trophies, guys. Wouldn't it be rad to call in a summon as an assist trophy? Yeah, that that would be, be awesome. I, I agree. <laughs> I agree. But That'd I feel so like sick. I feel like the assist trophy should be a chocobo. Speaking of chocobo. Oh my god. You can have uh, you can have chocobo hats now apparently. What? Yeah, you have yeah, chocobo hats added... on your on your me characters. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah, at the at the end of, at the end of the video, um, it showed it showed Klaus sitting there, and he was just like, I think it's like a thing came up on the screen. It was like, I smell chocobos, and then it panned out, and it was like, it was like seven tiny me's to jumping around just with chocobo hats, and then one really close to the camera with a chocobo hat. Oh my taking, god. Taking sit. <laughs> How did I miss this? Yeah. That shit's gonna be cool. so awesome. So, so Corey, so do you think Cloud is going to be a good character in Smash 4? Like, the oh, way man. things are, like, like from, like, what I saw, it just seemed like he he was basically kind of, like, another Marth, the way I felt, because he has, like, the, the up slash, <laughs> he has a counter, which looks like it's going to be his down B, and then, like, mm. a couple of his smashes kind of look the same, like, uh, like, Marth, like, minus... I I'm what I'm assuming is his slash that like kind of kind of uh shoots out the like little like blue wave, you know? Mm -hmm. But other than that, he kinda looks just like another Marth. Um, I think the only way he would be high tier at least is if he has that limit break as part of his mechanic and not like as a hypothetical final smash or something. Mm -hmm. Um and it's funny you mentioned Marth because Marth was really good in melee and in brawl, but in this game he's not very good at all. Um, they they nerfed him significantly, and uh, he's yeah he's pretty low on the tier list. And uh, Ike is as well, and they're both. And Ike is a slow uh, sword user, and Cloud looks like he's a little bit slow in his moves as well. They come out kind of yeah they come they come out kind of slowly. But if they gave him the projectile from the limit break to use, I think that would benefit him a lot and actually bump him up pretty high. Um, yeah. <clears throat> he he also had like a move. I think it was a move. Mm -hmm. But like he like turned something into a frog or like summoned like a little frog. <laughs> Did you see that? No, I didn't see that. What? It's uh, yeah, I, I I saw that. I didn't know what the hell that. I, was. I I don't know what the hell it is. I I wanna. I'm gonna maybe like assume it's like. I I I can't think of like what it would be like in actual Final Fantasy VII that he does that. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm gonna throw this out here. I'm a Final Fantasy VII fraud. I've never played it, 
so. Oh my a lot god. Of the references that were in the trailer I didn't Oh understand. my god. <laughs> I'm so what sorry. The hell was that ramen. <laughs> well, no, I was just mocking ramen cuz it's like yeah. <laughs> 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 Okay, well, we're well, going to edit. We're we're, we're we're going to internet guys. You could seriously watch the entirety of the game or just watch Gerard Gerard the completionist like four part series about the game and oh, get God. exactly what happened. Yeah, it's it's he goes really in depth with it. But he also talks to other YouTubers who played it and whatnot. It's actually quite fascinating. Oh, yeah. is is it pretty I assume it's pretty long if it's uh Yeah, it's a solid I mean if you watch it all in one go, it's probably a solid hour and twenty minutes. Oh <laughs> that's it's a heavy. movie. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's a it's a fucking movie, yeah. <laughs> Oh gosh! Actually, I'm gonna look that up right now. Yeah, so we're gonna have we're gonna have the chat. I'm, well, I'm gonna watch it because I need a. I haven't played that game in years. Yeah, but me yeah. either. Ah. But yeah, so I'm I'm kind of, I'm kind of hoping that uh, that cloud will end up being good because I I can't, like all of the uh, DLC characters that have come out, they haven't really been super good, right? Like minus like Roy. Mm, Roy's not even that good. He has a lot of shortcomings, hot <laughs> because he's short. Uh, but um. <laughs> Uh, I'm trying to remember. Lucas isn't that high either. He was a DLC. Mewtwo, surprisingly, is the third lightest character in the game. So uh, he dies super quick to the mechanics. Um, yeah. Because of rage and things like that. And then Ryu isn't too good either, right? Yeah, Ryu. But to Ryu be fair, is hard to play as, I think. Yeah, he's pretty foreign to Smash players. So nobody really plays him. Mm. Um, I think that's all the DLC that I can remember. Yeah, Mewtwo, Lucas, Ryu, Ryu, yep. and then now Cloud. Oh, Cloud! Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I hope Cloud is good. Um, from the trailer, he looks okay. If he has Limit Break, I think he'll be a lot better. Um, but otherwise, oh man, I I don't want to see another DLC character on the bottom. <laughs> Yeah, that so would I'm be terrible. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm hoping they actually... I'm, I'm, I kind of have a feeling that they'll probably have to make him good. I mean, people are going to play the shit out of him, you know? Because he's so popular. Man, I would hope so. Yeah. But... Okay, so so just to break down what the uh, the completionist... It's a seven-part series, by the way. <laughs> wow. Um, <laughs> each part... It's so, so it's, uh, let's see... Uh, 22 plus 25 plus 31 plus 33 plus 32 plus 12 plus 7. Wow. Um, uh, 17, sorry. The last one's 17, not 7. I dropped <laughs> off 10 minutes there. Mm. Uh, yeah, the first part is the prologue. Then it goes into disc 1, then disc 2, then disc 3, then the actual, uh, then Crisis Core, then Advent Children, then Dirge of Cerberus. So, yeah, he breaks down every last little detail and element from the entire series. So if you That's if crazy. you don't want to play the full you know eight ten hour <laughs> game or whatever you can watch, watch that. you can you, you can watch five hours or whatever however long I can't. yeah <laughs> I'm actually on a calculator oh, right now God. it's so I'll be honest it's really it's really really well done it's just really fucking long yeah man I wonder if it's worth did... it just to play the game and then go back and then listen to him instead of just oh, oh, I feel just like watch that's drawing it yeah. out. He does. He does. You know, technically spoil it and ruin it. So, I mean, if you <laughs> plan on playing it, <laughs> well, or or you can just wait for the Final Fantasy remake. Just, just, oh, yeah. just, just play it there, and you don't ah, have to read there, everything. There It'll be voice yeah, because also that Final Fantasy remake is gonna have uh, stuff from Advent Children and Dirge of Cerberus and Crisis Core and all that jazz in it. So yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. There you go, Corey. All right, I'll <laughs> play the remake. Okay, so <laughs> after Cloud. Mm -hmm. They said that in December, they were going to have like some kind of special little show, and I'm talking a lot about Smash. I have a feeling they're going to be announcing the the next round of characters. Who you guys think have a chance of making it? Who has a chance? What's really and who fucking do you cool? Want? For, okay, so what's really cool about that? La like, so in 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 the thing itself. Um, there's a really, really cool bit at the very end where it shows the, um, uh, like all the, uh, rights and, and copyright stuff at the very end. 
And then right at the bottom, like you see the the Square Enix logo, just go boop down at the bottom to add really? to the whole list of yeah, the whole list <laughs> of companies. I didn't notice that. And it was awesome. Look, there is so much room here for other companies to get in on this shit. Shovel Knight is the one that I want the most. Absolutely want Shovel Knight. Yeah, Anthony <laughs> said it, and so did Danielle. Uh, I've been, I call fucking, I said, like, if, if Square Enix can get in on this, like, that would be amazing. Could you imagine Sora in fucking oh, Smash? Well, that gives me uh, goosebumps just thinking about it. Sora? Look, we could have the Ninja Turtles up in there. We could the maybe Ninja get Marvel Turtles. up in there. Spider-Man. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Look, oh, I'm, just, I'm just, there's a lot that we could do with this. We might as well get John Cena in there. No. Let's not do that. Let's um. I mean, Ramen, you can kind of go fuck yourself with that reference. Uh, <laughs> um, but god damn, like there's so many options here now because like I a long time ago, like I think I was playing Smash Three, and uh, you know we had uh, we had uh, 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 Sonic and uh, Snake in three. And I, I made comments. I was like, man, could you just imagine if, like, Smash... Because I'm a casual Smash player. I don't... There's no competitiveness in me at all. Um, I was just like, man, could you imagine if, like, uh, Square Enix get on this and this company and this company and then, like, it no longer becomes just Nintendo characters. It's just all the... Then, like, it's starting to happen. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's 100% ahead. Like, the, yeah. the bottom of the screen was, like... It was, like, Namco, Capcom... Uh, uh, now Square Enix. I'm trying to remember the other companies that are involved. Uh, 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 Sega. Uh, uh, yeah, Sega. Yeah. God damn it! What was um. Hold on, I gotta pull it up because I can't remember. South Park Studios. Um, I don't know. That would be cool. South Park. Yeah. So Corey, okay. <laughs> who do you think has a chance of making it? In? Oh, uh, anybody at this point. I mean. Yeah. Yeah, this, yeah, it's it's it, like it it's 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 like kind of weird because it's like, we shit like, there's a possibility of like anybody being in now. Yeah, like, yeah, it's it, not just that on the and, and guys, Smash is even taking the route that I was talking about earlier, where they're adding DLC characters instead of coming out with a new game. Yeah, mm -hmm. like it's everything's going this route. <laughs> a game is going to come out. For a console, like a year after it releases, and that will be the only version of that game until the console's run is over. Yeah. Oh. Yep. Yeah. That's, sure. that, that's basically kind of well. Not. It didn't really happen with Street Fighter. They released like two other, three other disc versions of it. <laughs> but it was yeah. still the same. It was still one Street Fighter. Yeah. It wasn't like yeah. a new Street Fighter technically. Yeah. No. Yeah. I remember I Street Fighter. I remember Street Fighter Four Ultra. I had like it was free for a month on Xbox 360. I had downloaded it and I was like, I want to play this. Oh my god, there's like a hundred characters. <laughs> 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 yeah. It was insane. Yeah, I think that that that's the same thing. I think it's gonna happen with uh, with Smash. With, with yeah. Smash, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, could you imagine? So, just throwing this out here, just saying, Yu-Gi-Oh. Oh my god. I don't think so. I don't think I'm getting up in this bitch. I you want. and your dirty Digimon. One for you, Greg. <laughs> um, Look, I'm looking at my shelf again. I've got Zilla up in there. <laughs> okay. So, Corey. You got mm -hmm. Smeagol? One character. Okay, this is how we're going to do it. If you guys can have one character. Uh, Only yo. one character. So, who do you... It's going to have to be uh, Amaterasu from Okami. Oh, it's like my oh, dream character right there. I didn't legit. even think about her. Holy shit. Yeah, I, oh, I want her so bad. She would but... be tight. <laughs> okay, so <All> right. Greg. <laughs> oh, it's, Sh it's Shovel Knight. <laughs> I don't know why you're asking me Shovel Knight. It's Shovel Knight. And me? I want Banjo-Kazooie. Banjo-Kazooie. That would be awesome. Banjo-Kazooie oh, would... Here's here's why that won't happen. My head would fucking explode. Here's why that won't happen. Because Microsoft has a real strong grip on Rare. Well, I understand <laughs> that, but um, they there there was a, a interview actually where uh one of the people from Microsoft actually said that they're actually interested on in getting in getting Banjo Kazooie into Smash. <gasps> Paper Mario. Sorry. Um. <laughs> <laughs> That'd actually be really cool. Paper Mario? Yeah, who would I mean, be like the the 
Oh, you know, you know who I could also see being in there since um. Oh, Knights! Knights from Knights into Dreams. Why can't uh, we have him? That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Yeah. Like this. Like this is this is so Why crazy. Are there are so many. In there yet? Yes. All right. I'm sorry. They should have. <laughs> they should have some fucking squid Proto kids Man. in there. Sorry. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> Smash is crazy. All right. Also, so, also before before we stop, Ramen, okay. we do have to mention that at the very, very, very end of uh, the, the the direct, which I'm watching at this exact moment. Um, there is, it says news flash and then it comes across the screen. Uh, super smash brothers, special broadcast coming December, 2015. That's what I said. December, 2015. So I have a feeling it's going to be a bunch of, it's going to be like, here's the next DLC character. It's going to blow your fucking mind. Man. Ugh. I wish, I hope, cause you know how many, they have so many balance patches for smash. Mm -hmm. I hope they announce that they <laughs> release patch notes cause they never do. But they yeah, really I've always thought that was weird, Splatoon. right? It's it, it's it's kind of always like, like the the community always have to like go in and like yeah, use science to figure it out. Yeah, <laughs> science. Yeah. But, it is uh, crazy. Yeah, so yeah, I weird. think uh, is is there any other Smash stuff we want to talk about before we wrap up our whole Smash discussion? Um, the only thing is, that I can think about is uh, or think of. Is the announcement could be kind of like how Splatoon's having a huge tournament? Maybe they're going to announce a huge tournament for Smash Four. Oh 4? yeah, that would be awesome. That'd, That'd be, be actually sick. really cool. That'd be really yeah. cool. Um, they like they they kind of seem like they're more they're they're more into the whole idea of of like esports and stuff like that and the whole scene, you know? Because like at first. They didn't want anything to do with like the Smash scene, and like now they've had like numerous events and tournaments and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really embracing the community, the competitive community, at least. I mean, trying to balance the game and supporting. Yeah, tournaments Sak Sakura is like Sak Sakura's like I want my game to be casual. I don't want people fighting. I don't want. I don't want it. I don't like it. So shut, God, shut up. <laughs> Fucking uh, like okay. every single interview that they have with Sakura, he sounds like the most like terrible person to like talk to. He always sounds like depressed and shit. Really? Um, yeah. Like 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 literally go and like look up some of the quotes he has, and he's like, "I never sleep, and like I never like I'm just happy for it to all be over, and blah blah." Like holy <laughs> shit, dude. He sounds so sad. Yeah, there's a, there's a whole breakdown. Actually, again, the completionist did this. I it might have been, no, 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 it wasn't completionist. It was game theory. Broke down like each game and how Master Hand and the enemies in the game reflect Sakurai's growing up in the in his own life and then building the the franchise as it was and then going into Smash Four and it's like it's like if that's true, if all of what game theory said is true, like Sakurai, see, see a therapist, man. Seriously, it's kind of you got got some issues there you gotta you gotta work out buddy he needs a hug, <coughs> uh, he needs a hug. real quick so so i got i've pulled up the video even though it took me for fucking ever um so original game it says nintendo and then how laboratories and then it says characters and here's the rundown of all the companies with characters in the game nintendo how laboratories pokemon creatures inc game freak inc uh says you got i don't know about that uh, <laughs> ape inc Intelligent Systems, Sega, Capcom, Bandai Namco, Monolith Soft, Capcom USA, and then it goes, they like it brings in Square Enix. And there's so much room underneath it for more, guys. There's oh, so much and then we'll room. see Marvel there and <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> yeah. Food Network. Yeah, yeah, there you go. That'd be awesome. <laughs> Bobby oh, we can have Adventure Time characters in there. Uh, oh, man. See, Don't like the it's, or, or the, the it's so fucking crazy. Crystal Gems. God, Yo, damn Rose. it, guys. Rose I'm gonna. Quartz? I need to. I need to put my 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 giant. Wait, what is that? Is that a uh, a Steven Universe? Yes. Mm -hmm. that was Steven oh, okay. Universe. <laughs> <laughs> I need. I need to watch that show because a lot of people you say it's really good. You fucking noob. I'm so sorry. You goddamn. So. <laughs> God. <laughs> Going deep. I know. Deep. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> I'm gonna go be sad like soccer right now. I'm gonna go and fucking talk about how depressed I am. Make <laughs> a great game. Yes, that is true. And it'll just be basically 
it'll be a uh, a Food Network fighting game. That's that's, that's what I'm gonna make. <laughs> yes, that that is that is how we're gonna do it. Yes, or that. <laughs> okay, so um, that's basically it for the Nintendo Direct. Or we have like a couple more things to cover uh, for the rest of the podcast. And I'm gonna probably let Miss Corimon go for right now. But before we go, is there anything that you wanted to talk about real quick or bring up? Um. No, not that, not that I can think of. I think that was we covered most of it, if not all of it. Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet. Uh, did you actually get into the Overwatch beta? I didn't. No, no, oh, I did uh, not. Man, I tried so it's hard. Kind of killing to. me. <laughs> yeah, I cannot wait for Overwatch. Can't so yeah. Me. So before, so we'll, we'll we'll let you go right now. So before you go, could you let everybody know what's up with your your streaming and whatnot, and where they can find oh. you? Uh, you can find me at twitch.tv slash Corymon. It should be on the stream. I have it paused right now, so I, <laughs> I, I think it still looks the same. Yeah. Um, and then uh, I'm live weekdays, 2 to 6 p.m. I play pretty much all Nintendo games. Um, Melee and Smash 4 and Splatoon. And you can catch me on then. All right. Thank all you, right. Miss Corymon. Thank you for giving us some... Some insights into this Nintendo stuff. Yeah, no problem. Thanks for having me on, you guys. It was a lot of fun. Uh, go ahead and put your uh, your Twitch channel in the chat so people can give you a little oh. follow follow. Yep. All right, let me. Or or just type something in so that way we can. I mean, <laughs> there right? you go. Oh hi. There we go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> that works. And that follow. Works. <laughs> and follow. There you go. All right. Thank you, Miss Corey. We will awesome. watch. Thank you, guys. See you soon. Yep. Have a good one. Bye, Miss Corey. All right. You still in here, Greg? Yes, I am. Yeah. Awesome. So that was so cool to have Miss Corey. Yeah. Absolutely. It was fun. Yeah. I, I I don't have an I don't have a Nintendo system, so it's uh, it's actually quite refreshing. Yeah, that's why I was like, to, like yeah. I was like I don't know about any of this. Shit. I don't have this console. Huh. I don't, guys. I don't I don't know anything. My I don't know anything. I'm, just, I'm dumb. I'm just a guy who just happened to stumble upon this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, since since Anthony's not here and can't like you know tell us no. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Uh, do you want to just bullshit for like a little while? And have the stream going? Uh, we still have a couple of things to go. Oh, we still over. have topics. Go. Yeah, okay. we still have a couple topics. We we got we got really stuck on like the Smash stuff because I was like, yeah, we're not gonna spend that much time on Smash, and then we ended up taking up most of the time on Smash. Uh, okay, this is for you, Mister. Uh, they started rolling out the brand new Xbox One dashboard experience, yes. whatever the yes, hell they yes. call it. And you are one of the lucky people to get it early, board. right? What's that? Uh, you're 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 one of the lucky people who got the update now, right? Yeah. So uh, I had the um, I've had the the preview <clears throat> program for a while, and I could have gotten the new dashboard like a month ago, but one of the big issues was that a lot of the apps and games don't work with it. Like they were trying to figure out and iron that shit out, and I was like, yeah, I stream on my Xbox, so no. And I just, I didn't do it. I just didn't, I didn't download it. And then um, I had read online that they had fixed it. That a lot of the issues that were, um, like, a lot of those issues were fixed. So I downloaded it, like, two days prior. And, uh, prior to it being live. And um, that actually was beneficial to me. Because the day that it came out, everyone already had it or everyone was trying to download it so there were a lot of issues like people almost had their consoles bricked people were having games not work or having their entire library erased and they have to re-download wow. it all. uh luckily they're ga like i haven't heard anything about game saves being erased but yeah full game like installs were being go or just gone um so they'd have to wait like you know however long to install a 40 gigabyte game or whatever yeah, yeah. um but I never had those issues. I downloaded it, like, again, like I said, three days prior, two or three days prior. And then the only issue that I came across was that 
uh, my controller kept disconnecting from my Xbox. Now, it was doing this a long time ago, like when I first got the Xbox. Like, it was just having an issue disconnecting. And the only way to, like, properly... Because what it is is that the controllers um, have their own Wi-Fi signal. That's how they connect to the system yeah. wirelessly. But the problem is is that if you have a cell phone or if you live in a, uh, an apartment complex or some shit like that, there's a high probability that, you're, that your controller is going to start trying to connect to other Wi-Fi signals and disconnect from your Xbox. People who have this problem usually have a connect. And mm. I swear to God, if I, I'm saying the X word a lot and I'm waiting for my Xbox just to be like, yes? You said that? <laughs> it's like, what, what, yeah. what, what, what's up, Greg? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um... So uh, the way that I solved this problem was buying a cord. But I also wanted to buy a cord for it because having to deal with batteries is just a giant pain in the ass. So Mm -hmm. having a cord is just a thousand times easier since I'm also like, I don't know, three feet from my Xbox. So so does the new dashboard kind of help with those problems or is it that you're... That's that's what I was getting at was like when I downloaded it, my controller was doing that again. It kept disconnecting. Mm. And uh, it was really, really frustrating because the, the... the issue is that when I'm playing a game and I'm holding up to move forward, if my controller disconnects while I'm holding a, a direction or a button, it just keeps it like acts like it's just doing that uh. for like a hot minute, and I have to like disconnect it. Um, but luckily, the day before the patch went live, there was a 3.5 gigabyte update that my Xbox got, and everything's worked fine since. And so what I'm hearing is what I'm getting at. The reason I'm mentioning this is that a lot of people also had that same experience, but after the 12th. Mm-hmm. So I got, like I said, I got lucky with it. I, I got all my shit solved and problem free before everybody else. Um, That's good. But the good thing is that it works. So it's about four times faster in terms of like how things function, where the party system is where your games are, uh, loading up certain games, like everything just runs about four to five times faster. Yeah. And um, and that's because they, instead of making a overly complicated dashboard that has a hard time functioning on the system, they made something a lot more simplistic. This is another reason why most devices that have Windows are going in the same direction. Because having a user interface that is taking up uh, Skype-like uh, processes mm-hmm. um, is not a good thing. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, um, well, that and yeah, the I mean, the, uh, the the original dashboard was uh, designed around having a uh, connect. Yeah, plugged in. So, like with this new like dashboard, it just uh, like is everything just like more easier to find, Greg. Um, <laughs> sorry, I had a text message from somebody. Oh. Uh, so that's actually, it's really funny you mentioned that because in the previous dashboard, I was so used to it that I knew where everything was really easily. Mm-hmm. And it was kind of like having a new system. And I kind of had to dick around a little bit and figure out where certain things are and how to find certain, you know, certain aspects. Like every month when Xbox Live does their games for gold, I needed to find out where that was. <laughs> and, um... Uh, I found it. It's not. It's not that difficult. But like, uh, like after messing with it for a few, like an hour, maybe a half an hour, you should be good. Like, mm-hmm. like I said, instead of pressing to to get to go to your pins, which are games that you normally play or things that you normally pull up. So like Netflix, if you watch Netflix a lot, you'd have that in your pins. Mm-hmm. And originally, you pull. You know, you you turn on your Xbox. It starts off on the primary home screen. You hit left. And your pins are right there. Now you press down twice, and your pins are right there. So really, I mean, it's not like it's um, a hassle. Uh, and I don't really care. Like, and nobody else should care how it how it functions in the, in the idea of where to find things. That's not how. That's not the problem because everything's there. Everything, nothing's changed in that regard. Everything's still there. It just looks different and controls different. The important part is that the user interface doesn't bog down your system. Yeah. So when I say Xbox Snap Party, and there it goes, it did it. Yeah, so it's it's, it's really like... 
It's it's a lot faster now, a lot more responsive. Yeah, last time, yeah, last time it was like it would take at least ten seconds to pull that up. Oh, well, see, I remember now like the uh, two seconds, not even two. It was like a second. I mean, I kind of hope that they uh, they kind of get it right, like like the first couple of tries. Because I remember like the original 360, it went through like four different dashboard iterations, five, I think. I think it was five. Yeah. Yeah. When I I actually I actually like the original interface pretty good yeah the um the one thing i will say that i think is really funny is that like originally like you wanted to go back home you just press like and it's still it's still that way you press the center button but let's say you're in a game and you want to pull up a, a snap thing right mm -hmm. you would double tap the center button and it would bring up what looked like a cross-shaped thing and you press up to bring up a snap thing, and then and then uh, once it was snapped, you then had a list of things you could go through. Now, when you press it, it brings up a left side menu, and it just it has all the things that you can snap. Plus, if you go up, you can see your friends list, you can see the party, you can see messages, notifications, settings, and then it goes to the snap stuff. Hmm. Um. So yeah, it, like I said, it controls a little different, but it actually it's it's a lot more functionally stable mm -hmm. um uh it's still a situation where if you double tap and then press y or x you can take a screenshot or, or save a clip um so that you know that that didn't change um but the thing i think is really interesting is that they with this whole update you have backwards compatibility now oh yeah that that that, that came with this update yes so awesome as it stands right now when I go to my games and apps, um, I have Misplosion Man, Torchlight, Shadow Complex. Okay, that's it. That's those are the those are the backwards compatibility games I have downloaded. Um, what I could have is Viva. I have all the Viva Pin. Okay, so I have the the replay. The so so wait, how does it how, how does it how does it work? Like, do you that's pop in the at. like that's... like discs or what? So, okay, if you have the disc to an old 360 game, if it is backwards compatible, which the Xbox will let you know once you put the game in, um, you can then install the game onto your system. You still need the disc to play it, though. Um, it, will not, it will not be a digital copy. But if you have the digital copy, you can just straight download it to your console. Um when you when you go into it, it's basically an Xbox 360 emulator on your system. What? Yeah. So so when you when you pull up the game, it'll start to play like it'll just go into the game like it's any other game that you have on your system. Mm -hmm. Nothing changes into that. The problem is is that let's say you want to, uh, you have a couple friends that are in I don't know fucking. What game do I have here that's multiplayer? Um. All right, okay, Misplosion Man is multiplayer. Let's say I want to I want to invite my buddy to play Misplosion Man with me, right? Mhm. Mm um in order to do that, I have to start a multiplayer game in Misplosion Man and then uh to bring up the menu, like you remember the 360 menu that came in the center of the screen? Yeah. Uh you have to press you have to press the two center buttons on your controller at the same time. What? Instead, yeah, instead of pressing the center button, like the home button, you seriously press start and select at the same time to bring that up. Huh. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a little weird. A little <laughs> that, that sounds category. weird, yeah. Uh, but once you, ha like, once, once you get that figured out, like, you're solid. You're gold. Yeah, then you're pretty much good to go. So, um... um... Well, the reason they do that, uh, just to let Danny know, because Lyrical Danny says she hates that... The reason they do that is so that way you don't go renting games from Redbox or Gamefly or borrow games from a friend and just have it on your system. That's why they do it that way. They, you know, it, it comes down to it's, you know, they want you to buy the game or they want you to own it in order to play it. Yeah. So, hmm. I mean, I get you. I get what you're saying, but that's why that's why I like to get games digital now. Yeah, see, I mean, I'm kind of I mean that's that's kind of like a really really big thing now for that for you know for the console to be able to play like 360 games you know 
So, I mean, that's like basically like something that like a lot of people wanted. And the PS4 doesn't have that capability yet. I can have a feeling that they'll probably do something similar. So, yeah. yeah. So I'm kind of so that same sounds like the dashboard is pretty cool. So yeah, I like it a lot. It's uh, I mean, it'll take some people some getting used to. I mean, and and, and uh, it's definitely not super intuitive right off the bat, which I think a lot of people will have a complaint about. Mm -hmm. um you kind of have to figure out where things are uh, i remember one of the things one of the big problems that i saw prior to it releasing on the 12th was that when um hutch of half from the energy tank had downloaded it um brian of heat who they he lives with uh tr had uh he wanted to download all his songs that he could for rock band 4 onto the onto the console yeah and the problem, the problem he ran into was that because of the new dashboard, it was really difficult to find songs. Wow! It just didn't it didn't work right? Yeah. Now, 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 I mean, with with it being completely updated and ready to go, it might be different. But he was just having a really hard time with it. Hmm. So, is this something that people will just have to kind of get used to? I mean, I have a feeling they'll probably tweak it like as it goes along. You know. I said, like, Microsoft is kind of, they've always made changes to their dashboards and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 Okay. So the next bit of news is uh, Fallout 4 was released. And, I mean, the game, the game came out. Um, it's an awesome game. I've been playing the hell out of it. The past, like, three days, I've been streaming it and been playing it. Been having a blast. But the game kind of released with a few like graphical glitches and bugs that have uh, been kind of like popping up here and there. Like for instance, um, at certain times randomly the frame rate will just like drop to like basically zero. And oh yeah, yeah, that's right. And it also hurt hurt uh, Pornhub. <laughs> Did you hear about that? I read it. Yeah, I read about that. Yeah. Like it it's fucking uh it's user base like like a, a spike in just uh like unact deactivity with the second the game was released now yeah. there could be two reasons behind that a lot of people say is that not only were people not watching the uh, the the um leaked clips on Pornhub but people also weren't just straight up watching porn anymore <laughs> everybody was like all right i can't fap anymore it's time to play fall <laughs> I mean, and that is realistically, crazy, Ramen, if, like... I say, why not do both? Like, you, you know, one hand on the controller, the other hand on... <laughs> I don't know anyone that can do that. However, there is, a, there is a device you can buy that, like, it's like a like a flashlight that actually, like, is automatic. <laughs> really? Like, it comes it comes with a stand, yeah. And you just set one. it up and you just, like, you just lay back and let it go, let it go to town. <laughs> and lay back and... <laughs> Oh god. Anyways, so yeah, so um This got this got Digimon dirty again. It did, did. god damn. <laughs> <laughs> I swear to god, that was not meant to sound dirty. It just I'm going to like I'm after this cast is done, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna highlight specifically what you said and just like <laughs> Anyways. Yeah. So yeah, so there's um there's been some like frame rate issues with the game, um, specifically. Apparently, it uh, it's been affecting the Xbox One the most. Um, I've been playing the game for the past three days, and uh, I can say like yeah, it it's it has it's like random frame rate dips and whatnot. Like randomly, you'll be walking around, and then everything will just stop. Like just just stop for like a second, and kind of just like. It doesn't really chug to where like the frame weight just like drops to like where you're walking around like 10, 10 frames a second. It'll just randomly flat. I have for a I second. have legitimately heard that the game on PC somehow gets down to like a fucking uh, uh, one or no zero zero frames per second. Yeah, it does. Yeah, literally, it does. So it's it, 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 no longer it's, frames per second. That's just a picture. It, it's it's just a picture at that point. But I mean, it doesn't. 
like um luckily it doesn't happen a lot when you're when when you're in combat i haven't had it happen to me yet during combat no, it seems from what it I just kind of happens when you're walking around or if you're entering yeah, buildings. Yeah, when it's trying to load up new giant areas. Because the they really wanted the game to not be like um, Fallout 3, where kind of going to a new area, it had to load it up real quick. Yeah. They want it to be seamless. It just loads everything. And the way they do that is they have these barriers that like, they have to load in a whole another section of the game while you're making your processor another one. So it's like, it's working double. It's a whole thing. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah, um, it's, uh, but this, you know, that's, I hate to do, I hate to say this because it's not fair, but Hey, it's Bethesda, you know, like, yeah, I mean, they, I think every single release that every they've had, open world game they've ever every had, has had, issues yeah, like has had issues like that, especially on, on PC. But I mean, um, aside from like all these, you know, these, I mean, they're, they're not really, really huge issues. It's not like where like the game is like un becomes like unplayable. It's just like minor annoyances, you know. Uh, but I mean, the game yeah. is still a blast. Like I've I've had those issues happen and stuff like that, and I'm still enjoying it. Um, so far, the only thing, the only bad thing I could probably say about the game is I hate the dog, the fucking companion. <laughs> it's so stupid, so fucking stupid. That dog did nothing but get in the way. Other than that, the game's fucking amazing. I love it. So that's basically all I have to say about Fallout 4. If if, if you if you have a chance, go play it. I'm pretty sure that they'll probably fix these frame rate issues. They'll probably be patching it up soon. I I can't imagine them not just like leaving it the way it is. Um, and also patching some of the glitches and some of the exploits that, that they found. So, yeah, we'll move on from that, and we'll talk about something that uh, Greg is currently playing. I mean, I was, and then I realized that like, <laughs> I'm a little too tired to concentrate on the conversation and play. Oh, well, he was playing it. I was, I was. Mm -hmm. Um. So, yeah, I... Uh, don't ask how. I don't like to talk about my business. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> No, I've been playing the Star Wars Battlefront. Um, it's uh, early access through EA's access thing. Um, when the beta was out, I fucking loved it. It was seriously two things, and I played Walker Assault probably like way, way more than most people did. Um, I, I couldn't get enough of it. It was seriously one of the most entertaining experiences that I had in a game. And not just because I have a strong bias towards Star Wars... But because, um, <laughs> because because it's a good shooter, mm -hmm. it plays really well. Yeah, I, I had I, I, I was I, able to play in the beta too, and like game, it's uh, it's it's last. Uh, as it stands right now, <sighs> let me go into the game real quick because <laughs> I was there and then I wasn't. Um. There are more options than people are leading on. Sure, there's only 11 blasters. But there's a lot of cosmetic stuff. Uh, there's 50 levels you can get to. There's a bunch of fucking cards that allow you to do different things in the battle. Um, I, uh, I'm going to be playing this a lot. Like, be prepared for every time Greg streams. It's going to be Star Wars Battlefront. <laughs> um... Just because I can't, I just, I want to, like, I just, oh, it's so good. <laughs> People, there's a lot of, there's been a lot of strife online about how Star Wars is this, and or Battlefront's this, and not this, because of EA, and EA just made it more like this, and it's like, yeah, shut the fuck up. Yeah. Like, why is that a bad thing? Um, but one of the cool things that, so, <laughs> there are... So you have the Rebels, which are, you know, the Rebels. There are a grand total of, um, let's see, I'm going down the list right now. There are 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 different humans that you can choose from. And they each have different, uh, like you can take their helmet off and uh, by unlocking it. And then there's um, 
And then there's a, a grand total of, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven different aliens that you can play as. Granted, you have to be at least level 40 to unlock the first one. But uh, and they're really expensive in terms of credits. But by the time you hit that point, you'll have so many credits you don't know what to do with. Yeah. Um, for the Imperials, uh, it's kind of the same thing. Uh, there and, and it's the same faces too. Okay, so that's interesting. <laughs> um, but there are twelve. There are twelve humans in that as well with the with the with the stormtroopers. Um, and then there are two uh, down at the bottom. That is a scout trooper and a shadow trooper, and I will be as soon as I can. I'll be unlocking that shadow trooper. But one of the surprises, one of the big surprises that I was not expecting, is it seems like uh, the developers took a note from Destiny, and you can have emotes that you use with the D-pad. So we don't I use do... that word in my house anymore, Greg. Oh, Destiny. Yes. Shut up. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. But uh, but yeah, I have a, I have a dance emote. I, I do I can do with a robot in the middle of battle. I can put blame on somebody. I can say what it wasn't me. He did it. <laughs> I can I can look sassy. So um, um for awesome man for for people who are not um don't know about the whole EA or like early access thing. So like like. What does that mean? Like, how uh, does it work? So EA Access is, I think it's, uh, it was like, it's $5 a month, which as soon as I'm done, because that's the thing, EA Access isn't worth it, period. It's, it's really not worth it. I only paid $5 right now to play Star Wars for 10 hours before it comes out on Tuesday, because I'm impatient. Um, and I already have a bot, so I'm, I'm playing it on Tuesday. Uh the um but what it normally does is it allows players and gamers to get stuff early like deal new dlc early uh to play trials of games before they come out like this um uh if you have it apparently you can play on the new jaku map when that dlc comes out on battlefront like this is things like that yeah nothing nothing inherently too big um but like sometimes if you have if you have ea access you can actually play um old school EA games for free, which I mean, cool, I guess. Well, that's cool. Um, and so what... to me, it's not worth it because <clears throat> I don't, A, I don't play enough EA games to really warrant the price. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's not, it's not inherently like, again, it was $5 right now because I want to fucking play Star Wars. Mm-hmm. Uh, but overall, it's not, it's not something you need to have. Yeah. Yeah. I see. But it's like you you can you were telling me earlier that you can only like you'll be able to play Battlefront for ten hours and then what, it just lets you not play the game anymore? Yeah, pretty much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's kind of interesting that they that they did that they do that. Okay. So yeah, I could technically play Need for Speed right now. I could play the trial for Need for Speed if I wanted to. Um I could play the trial for NBA Live, for FIFA sixteen, NHL, Madden. Rory Mc Rory McAloy PGA Tour Battlefield Hardline Dragon Age Inquisition Sports Oh it's Dragon Age Inquisition is free in the vault so as long as I have access I can play I can play uh Hardline Inquisition NBA Live 15 FIFA 15 NHL Madden I can play all these old school games well, old school these older games uh for free and That's pretty cool actually and you said it's yeah, like, it was it's, like what said, it's it, it's it's only five bucks a month or what? Uh, yeah, it was it was it was five bucks a month for, mm-hmm. for what I had. Um, let's see, EA access benefits. Here we go. It says benefits include the vault. Enjoy an evolving selection of EA's best Xbox One games. Play for less. Save ten percent on all EA digital purchases on Xbox One, and play first. In addition, members can try EA's X- Xbox One games five days before the release date and play for a limited time. So, if you play a lot of EA games, it is a hundred percent worth it. Mm-hmm. Um, if you don't play a lot of EA games, it is absolutely not worth it. Yeah. Um, like it sounds like if if you're really big into like the sports games and it it's like 
A must have. Right. Yeah. I'm seeing how I how I can cancel the membership. <laughs> okay, manage membership. There we go. And then I cancel it through here. Got it. So yeah, it's um for a one month subscription it's five dollars and for a twelve month subscription it's thirty bucks. So you're saving oh you're actually saving quite a bit. Yeah, see that that's that's pretty good. Okay. So I think um I guess they're gonna basically be the show. Good, cause I am. I, to, I need to go back to bed. I am fucking tired. Yeah, yeah. We had a extended podcast, didn't we? Yes, we did. Yeah. So <sighs> I think we're gonna go ahead and call it a stream, guys. I wanna give a shout out to everybody who has been in here. Thank you yeah, for all the lovely. friends and all the people, and thank you for Miss Corymon for being in here, and all the people who have shared the cast and said that we were handsome, and uh, yeah, yeah. I don't know how to end the show. I think you did good. Um, what we usually do is we promote ourselves. Oh yeah, you're right. Then... Okay. Okay, so so um, the web, then you promote the website, and then so, you say um, we'll see you next Saturday. So guys, first off, make sure you guys visit midstartpodcasts. dot com for your latest in gaming and anime news. Uh, we have a bunch of different podcasts on there. We have the Rolling Twenties, we have the Con Over, and we have this lovely podcast. Which I did. It doesn't really have an actual name, does it? It's just the no, podcast. It's just it's the Mission Star podcast. Yeah. So yes. It's the primary podcast on the site, even though it's the one that gets probably the least amount of views. Oh, well, we're gonna change that shit, aren't we, guys? Fucking change that. Pro- probably not. Uh, I mean, no, we, we will. We, no, we will. I will. Look, I'll, I enjoy yeah. doing it. I'm not saying it's a, it's a bad show. I'm just saying it's. <laughs> it's the best show on Mission Star podcast. All right, guys. So yes. Please check out MrStartPodcast.com, and if you guys like to, you can probably join us next week around the same time, around like 11 o'clock on Saturdays, 10 o'clock, around this time, you know, the podcast, and we'll be keeping you guys up to uh, date on to, if, the, if, the week's gaming news. If you guys go to our Facebook page, which is just Mission Star Podcast, um, we, will, we always put up an ad uh, sometime before the podcast starts, so you can always know when we're about to start it up. Yes. So yeah, thank you guys. And um, um, I have been joined today by my lovely friend Greg Dietz. So let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, Chub Rock Geek at Chub Rock Geek. Uh, I decided to stretch and yawn at this exact moment. So give me just a second. It's almost <laughs> over, and we're good. Um. I stream every Saturday on Half Empty Energy Tank. However, because of the last, God, two months, uh, there's been a lot of stuff on Saturdays. I haven't been on Saturdays often, but uh, primarily my brother's wedding and then birthdays and all sorts of shit. But um, yeah, next Saturday, I'll definitely be on this tonight. Something's happening on Twi- on, on, on the Half Empty channel. I don't know who or what, but it's happening tonight. Um, something's happening. Something's going to be on. Uh, <laughs> I honestly, it'll probably be Brian playing Fallout 4. Um, but, uh, uh, yeah, I I, uh, I know that next Saturday I'm going to my buddy Andy's house and we're going to try to play um, uh, the, um, god damn it, uh, Gears of War Ultimate Edition on the, like, the hard difficulty. Awesome. Um, so, yeah, I'll be doing that at his house. Uh but yeah, um, yeah, definitely follow twitch.tv slash half empty energy tank for all that. And then I'm still working on like articles and reviews and shit. I'm just, it's been, I just recently got a job. So I'm, my time is a little bit more limited than I'd like it to be. Yes. Yes, also, indeed. Also, uh, he put a Twitter account. What is in... this? Yeah, I'm checking it out right now. Oh my god, it's fucking oh, Kappa. Yeah. I just saw that. Yeah, that Kappa. is crazy. I, was send it to you and I totally forgot, yeah. That's fucking awesome. That is so fucking awesome. Oh my god. Okay, anyways, so we're, we got super 
fucking distracted here. Okay. So yeah, you guys, you guys can find Greg there at those places. And I am Ramen. And I am standing in for Mr. Anthony. Be back here next week, I hope. But for now, you guys can find me here on Mitch Star Podcast. I'm going to try to maybe stream a little bit more for this channel. So uh, be sure to 